In today's class, we will discuss about sutures and knots. This topic you need to understand. Like once we are done with the surgery, we will finally suture the skin, and that is done by sutures with its suturing techniques. And in the recent years, every exam has one or two questions from this particular topic. So kindly do focus on this topic and try to remember every point mentioned in this lecture. So I will start my discussion with the basic suturing technique. First, we will start with the square knot or the reef knot. Now, the square knot is the standard surgical knot and it is a secured knot. And what do you understand by this secured knot? I'll explain it in some time. So, how do we give this square or reef knot? This you need to understand by an image. Okay, so as you can see in this image, there are two ends. The one is the grey end and the other one is the green or the yellow end. But here I want to mention that originally the suture is of same color. It is not of different colors. Here I am mentioning this two different colors as for your better understanding. So that I can explain it in a better way. So when you take these two ends of the sutures, the first is the grey one and that is on my right side and the other one is the green which is on the left side. So firstly what we will start with, we will take the right end that is the grey coloured end will cross the other side which will then come to the left side. We will be moving from right to left side that means even the green and yellow end of the suture will come on the right side. Now this what you have done right now is known as square throw okay it is known as square throw after this the gray end okay the gray end is again crossed which means now the gray end is again on the right side and the green and yellow end is again on the left side and that completes the square knot or the reef knot and this is a secured knot which means it does not open and this knot is used for vascular surgery. So, what do you understand by this square knot? It means we had given two throws here. Next comes the granny's knot. Now, this granny's knot is also known as a slip knot. Now, what is the difference between a granny's knot and a square knot? I'll explain it. So, again we have taken two threads. The one is of blue color and the other one is of red color. Now in this granny's knot, we take a throw but we don't cross the sutures. Okay, we take a throw but we do not cross the sutures like we did in the square knot. So the right end remains at the right side. Okay, then in the next step, we again take a throw without crossing which means we have taken two throws without crossing. Okay, and this makes a granny's knot. Now, this is known as a slip knot as it slides easily, so it is called as a slip knot, which means it is an insecure knot. And why we call it as a granny's knot? It is because you all must have worn that homemade sweaters knitted by our grannies. So, the grannies used to use this technique, the granny's knot. So, the suture technique or the knot is known as granny's knot. Then comes the surgeon's knot. As this is known as surgeon's knot because most of the surgeon uses this surgeon's knot. So how a surgeon's knot is given? Now in the surgeon's knot, two ends are taken. Again we are taking two ends. We are going to cross the ends. And when we are going to cross the ends, we are going to take two throws in one crossing. Okay. As you can see in this image, this is the first throw which we are going to take and in the same cross we are going to take the second throw which means we will cross it again so that the end goes back to its original position. So that means two throws are made in first attempt and one throw is made on the second attempt and that makes a surgeon's knot and this is a secured knot. Okay, this is a secured knot. After this, there are some other knots also like the half hitch knot where only one throw is taken. The second is the 
crossed half hitch knot and the third one is the extra half hitch on reef knot now all these are slip knots which means they are all insecure knots okay they are all insecure knots now after the knots we will now discuss about the skin suturing before going into the detail firstly for every suture material ideally there should be five characteristic features and the features includes the physical structure the strength tensile behavior absorbability and biological behavior coming to the suturing and always remember this that in skin suturing whenever we are suturing a skin we want everted edges okay these are your everted edges whereas when we are doing bowel anastomosis we need inverted edges and that's the point of difference between the skin suturing and the bowel anastomosis okay after this a very basic simple question has been asked twice in the exam that what are the three important instruments used in the skin suturing so the first is the needle holder the second is the tooth forcep and the third is the straight scissors we don't use curve scissors as the curve scissors are used to remove the sutures but for suturing we require straight scissor so do remember this as this has been asked in the exam now starting with the suturing technique so the first we will discuss about is the simple interrupted sutures imagine this is the laceration and these are the two ends of the lacerations in simple suturing the needle is inserted from one side and is taken from the other side at right angle and then we tie the knot okay then we tie the knot and the aim is to get an everted sutures so this is how we do a simple interrupted suture now here you need to also remember that each of these successive sutures should be placed twice the distance okay it should be placed twice the distance of each other and each suture be placed at right angle to the axis of the wound so this is the simple interrupted sutures moving to the second type that is the mattress suture now this mattress suture is very important and how it is important so if simple sutures are not giving rise to everted edges we will go for mattress sutures now these mattress sutures can be of two types the horizontal type and the vertical type and both of them gives us the everted skin sutures so starting with the horizontal type now in horizontal type again this is the laceration okay and we will take the needle and insert it to the other side if this is from this is the end we will insert the needle and we will take it out on the other side horizontally and then come back adjacent to the first bite but at the same depth okay and once we reach again the same side we will suture it so the horizontal mattress suture everts the skin well and is hemostatic in nature do remember these two points another very important point related to horizontal suture is that it has the least cut through rate okay this is the horizontal suture moving to the vertical mattress suture moving to the vertical sutures so what we do in this vertical mattress sutures again a vertical laceration is there so the needle moves vertically to the other side this is the needle and we are moving it to the other side but it is going deeply okay do remember this and then it comes out superficially okay so if you see this image we are going this through deeply and then we are coming back superficially in the same line so this vertical sutures also help in the eversion of the skin this mattress suture is also helpful in producing accurate approximation of the wound edges so do remember this horizontal and the vertical mattress suture now before moving to the other type of suturing techniques i want to discuss a very important point here the first point is that the needle to be inserted should be at right angle to the incision first point the second point here is that x here 
as you can see in this image x is the depth of the wound so if x is the depth of the wound bite on each side should also be of x centimeter okay this distance the bite should also be of x centimeter but the distance between the two sutures okay this is the distance which i have already mentioned the distance between the two sutures should be twice the distance apart from each other okay after that coming back to the suturing techniques and the next we will discuss is the subcuticular sutures so what is this subcuticular suture so in this when continuous sutures are taken from inside okay in this suture nothing is seen outside every suture is taken from inside so that means there will be no mark on the surface of the skin and this gives a good cosmetic appearance okay so this is a very important subcuticular suture now a question was asked in aims exam that what is the best suture material used in subcuticular sutures so the answer will be 30 monocryl suture used in the cutting or reverse cutting needle so this is a very important point which have been asked in the aims exam the next technique is the continuous suture technique and here we will also discuss about the aberdeen's knot or cobbler's knot so as you can see in this image this is the correct way or the correct tying procedure which is done by aberdeen's or cobbler's method okay so do remember what is done in continuous suture the first suture is inserted in an identical manner to an untrapped suture and it goes until the far end of the wound is reached okay this is the continuous suture and it is secured by aberdeen's knot and why it is called as cobbler's method it is known as cobbler's method because cobblers use the similar technique this aberdeen's knot technique only to stitch the shoes then comes the running locked suture and in this technique we lock each of the bites okay as you can see we have taken this to the other side and then we are locking each of the bites and this helps in the evenly distribution of the tension and it also gives a good cosmetic result as the tension is very light in this suturing technique after that comes a far near near far suture in case of deep cavities simple sutures cannot obliterate the large cavity okay this is a simple suture and this cannot obliterate the large cavities so we then use this far near near far suture and lastly there has been a recent update a novel suture material is used to reduce or eradicate the need for knot tying and this is basically used in the laparoscopic surgery and this can be unidirectional or bidirectional barbs okay so do remember this this is a barbed suture technique which has been recently updated and this can be 